All right, welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm gonna be going over how to put your cam into your box and actually have your crank spin and have your cam go up and down in Bob, or have your follower, sorry, Bob with the cam and kind of do the, create the motion. So, uh, so far right now, I just have my, my box here. Now I'm gonna take the visibility off of the sides eventually. I have my crank and I don't have my axle yet, so I'm gonna import that. Import my cam, my follower, my, uh, bushing, things like that. So, uh, first thing, let's bring my axle in. This video will be a little bit more on the lengthier side, so I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. So, the actual only thing you need in here to be a Revolut joint is your axle. So, if I go to joint, I can uh, do my axle. Let's say I wanna do over here at the edge. Now, I'm gonna move to my side view. This doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm just gonna do it right about there to kind of have it centered. Uh, I'm gonna change it from a rigid joint to a revolute. This is the thing I want to actually have spinning. So there you go, if you zoom in far enough, you can actually see the flag is moving, this is spinning. If I double click on the flag, I'll put it back at zero. There you go, that'll be my resting position. So uh, next thing, I have my crank already in here. So if I do joint, I'll do a rigid joint between here and the edge of the axle. I do not want this to be revolute, I want it to be rigid. And there you go. So this will crank, this will move the axle and turn. I kind of rotate around here, we'll move it. So another thing, again, I'm gonna put this back at zero, I just double clicked. If I right click on the flag, edit my limits, I want this to always rest at zero degrees. So if I rotate this now, it's gonna snap back to zero. You're gonna see a lot of things definitely snap back into place when we kind of go through this tutorial. So again, all I did was I right clicked, edit joint limits. I used to have rest as off. We've never really used this before, but if I turn it on, have it at zero degrees, and there you go. If I bring this down, if I let go of my mouse, it snaps back up. This is what we want. So uh, now I'm gonna kind of hide my visibility of my side here. I don't really need any more as well. I like to really get rid of all my rigid joints just makes it look cleaner, makes, helps me kind of visualize what I'm doing and kind of stay on task. So next thing is I need to put my, bu uh, not bushing, sorry. Uh, we could do that first actually. So my follower guide, kind of similar to your axle bushings here. They are very, very similar. I wanna import one of these. Uh, that orientation is okay. I'm gonna have this one go into my middle one because I'm only doing one cam in this tutorial, so I'm gonna put it in the middle. Uh, if I go joint, I'll do a rigid. So I'm gonna have it go around this rim and that will match up with this rim. Perfect. Again, I'm gonna hide my visibility on my joint. So from here now, I'm going to grab my pair cam. Uh, you could do this for whatever cam you're using. I'm gonna just use my pair. I'm gonna import this. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Now, again, if I have this, this orientation right here, if I put this on the axle right now, if I put my cam and when it touches the top here, that's gonna be the highest point. So I'm actually gonna just pre-rotate this to 90 degrees. And same thing, this point kind of here, this will be kind of maybe at a low point um, before it kind of goes up with the movement uh, against the longer edge. So right there is fine, and again, this can be customized 100% on your own, depending on what you're doing. So, uh, we're gonna go back to joint. I'm going to grab my circle of my, on my PAM, and I'm actually gonna grab the middle of my axle. So I can grab the end of the axle, the other end over here, I can grab my bushing or center of the axle. So if I grab this. So, again, this is gonna be rigid. If I go to my side view now, you can see that this square is here, what we was kind of what we're looking to line things up with. So if I grab this, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So right about there, this looks, you know, somewhat centered to me. If you want to get fancy and change the numbers, go for it. Uh, but I'm happy with this. I'll hit enter. So that's cool. Again, hide my joint visibility. The next thing, and this is the only thing that now actually has the slider. So I'm, I'm going to get rid of my top panel for visibility. So I'm going to bring in my roller now. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 
was just here. Oh, I'm sorry, right here, this pink one. So I'm going to bring this in. Uh, again, I'm going to pre-rotate it 90 degrees. There you go. Now, this is the thing that actually has your slider joint. Everything else, rigid. So, uh, joint. I'm going to have it kind of use this kind of middle, uh, smaller square to then match up with my follower guide. So, if I hit control on my keyboard and I hover over this side, I can actually select... I can select the middle of this. So again, I'm just using control. So joint, as I'm hovering here, hit control with your left hand maybe, then right, and then you can left click with your mouse. That's number one. I'm gonna come in here. I'm going to rotate underneath. I'm gonna hover around this, hit control, and grab the middle. So this is what it looked like if it was a rigid joint. Again, I'm going to make this a slider. There we go, that's good. Now, this is kind of where fun begins, if you want to say. So, my slider joint, if I right click on it, I can go edit joint limits. I'm going to have maximum turned on, minimum turned on, and rest turned on. I'm not going to change really any of these numbers now. But I am going to move this joint down. So, let's see if it's maximum or minimum, depending on how you joint it. It might be one or the other. So, let's say I do point 0.3. Okay, cool. So, point 0.3. That kind of moves it down, that's good. I'm gonna just do that real quick. So, it goes down, it goes up. This is our kind of first step that we want here. So, we're good. And again, however you have your cam, your number for might not be 0.3, might be 0.2, might be 0.4, might be something else. So the next thing is that we're gonna go back to assemble and we're gonna do these enable contact sets. So, we're gonna do new contact set. I'm going to click my roller and click my cam. Hit OK. So what this is doing, that's kind of telling Fusion that, yes, this can contact this. I want these to contact. I want them to kind of have some relationship. So again, if I do enable contact sets, and then again, I do enable all contact. So they're not touching yet, but you'll see that they will. So again, and you can kind of see right now that this is snapping up. Um, you'll see in a second how it's actually going to snap down and touch my cam. So again, uh, I can right click on my joint limits. So 0.3, that's what I was kind of looking at. Sorry. I want this to say zero. I'm looking at my rest value now. So if I do rest this 0.4, let's see what happens. It's maybe touching it, but let's go 0.45. So it's very, very important that you do your contact set before you do this rest value. So yes, it's okay that my maximum has changed. That's okay, so right now, so if I hit okay, let me kind of backtrack a little bit. It's okay that your maximum or minimum has changed to then your rest value. It's perfectly fine that they're the same. What this is basically doing that, I've told Fusion that yes, I want this, the cam, and the roller to make contact, and I want my rest value to technically be inside of my cam. But we're kind of tricking Fusion to where it's actually going to just be touching at one specific point, kind of like our tangent tool. So if I click OK, now if I move this up, it actually is snapping down instead of up. And again, it if you kind of watch the video back again, it stopped here and then it moved down. So I'm having it actually crash into this, but it's only touching at this specific point and it's going to follow my cam all the way around. So. If I rotate my crank now, it is going to go with the cam and, and I can rotate this. If I right click on my um, revolve, I can do animate joint relationships and this will actually then spin. So cool, this actually is not lagging. <laughs> um, always in class it would lag, so this is great that you can see this. So I have my roller, I have my follower guide, I have my cam. Depending on how many cams you're having, you might need to do maybe four of all of this at different times. So if I did another cam, I would have to go to an assemble, new contact set. You do not, you need to have a contact set for every single cam and every single roller. So I have roller one and pair cam, so that's my first one. So if I do a heart cam and another roller, that's going to be your new contact set. Always for a new contact set for each one. Also, 
if you see above origin joints here, you see contact. So I can disable for no contact and I can contact with sets. So if I turn this off, so no contact, it, it's gone. This will not spin with it anymore. I want it to spin again. Do assemble, you could do enable contact sets. Then you go and assemble again, enable all contact. Now it will go with it. So it's just a kind of a fusion thing. So again, if you go to net contact, it's not going to spin with it. So we're turning the setting on and we're turning the setting off. So it kind of helps us work depending on what we're trying to do. Um, the last thing that what I would want in here is my follower. So my follower is kind of that square, um, just extruded piece. So this is actually gonna then get put into my roller here and then the, my top will then be attached to it when we actually make the physical boxes. So another thing I like to do here, my follower guide, if I turn that visibility off, I can then joint. I select the middle of my square. I'll come over in here. I'm gonna hit control again when I'm hovering kind of on the inside. Control, snap to the middle, and there you go. So then this will join. But don't want a slider, want a rigid. If I hit OK, uh, let's enable contact sets. Let's enable all contact. Let's animate the joint. So cool. So this is kind of where it maybe gets a little bit laggy with actual this piece next. But you can see you have your cam spinning, um, hitting the roller, moving the follower. This will work perfectly for what we're trying to do. So. You will have to do this for every single cam, but once you kind of get this working and you have your designs going, it's super, super cool to see. Uh, if, also, if you hit the animate and if you hit escape on your keyboard, it will stop everything. Then you can hit, get rid of your contacts and do the whole process again, rinse and repeat until you are done with your design. So hopefully this video helps. It was on the longer end, but there's a lot of steps to kind of getting this thing to move in Fusion.